A year ago, many people, and not just Conservative voters, thought the next occupant of number 10 would be Rishi Sunak. But if a week is a long time in politics, then uh, 12 months is an eternity. Boris Johnson's fortunes have revived, it seems. The Chancellor's star, by contrast, is in free fall. Today, he asked for an official inquiry to clear up questions about his tax affairs. At the weekend, removal vans were seen at number 11 to take away the belongings of Axata Murti, the Chancellor's wife, whose tax status has been the subject of leaks. Perhaps most damagingly, Rishi Sunak's commitment to Britain itself has been called into question. After it emerged, he held a green card that would allow him to live in America until October last year. That's when he relinquished that green card. Let's turn to the Shadow Minister for Leveling Up, Alex Norris, MP, who joins us now, <laughs> technology was missing. There you go. Alex Norris, uh, thanks so much for your time. Um, obviously, you, you're going to agree as, a, as an opposition politician on the front, shadow front bench that uh, Rishi Sunak's star has waned. Um, there are some people a little bit uncomfortable about the way his wife's been dragged into this. Well, I'm not sure that's a fair characterisation. You know, this is a chancellor who has put up taxes for the British people up to historic levels, 15 different tax rises costing, meaning that we're all, you know, two and a half thousand pounds worse off under his chancellorship. All of us have to declare what our spouses do and their, and their income. I think it's reasonable that for, for the individual who's um, who's put up you know taxes in this way that there's going to be some accountability for in his family circumstances for what seem to be you know significant efforts to avoid paying tax I think that's entirely reasonable that those questions would be asked uh, and she's answered the question hasn't she she is now she will now pay UK tax even on foreign earnings in India well um, but this is part of the problem Colin because you know when when the Chancellor came out last week, you know, we were told that these arrangements were inevitable ones that stemmed from her citizenship and that there was no question. And then actually, it turns out a number of days later, something could have been done about them. Uh, and then, of course, we hear, you know, very specific uh, news about the Chancellor himself holding a green card and, you know, all that implies. So actually, there is quite a bit here. And, and you know, being really honest, Colin, I'm not the one who's referred um, him to Lord Guy. He's referred himself. So he himself is clear that this, that, that, that we've not got to the bottom of this. And it's right that we do. And of course, actually, I think the bigger issue is too, that Sajid Javid has said he also used uh, similar schemes as well as using trusts. That was the previous Chancellor, the current Health Secretary. I think it's reasonable now that the entire cabinet, who of course are collectively responsible for taxation in this country, are clear themselves. Has anyone else been using this status? Is anyone else aggressively using trusts, for example, in tax havens? I think these are leg legitimate questions for people to know the answer to, and I think we need to have it. Uh, you mentioned the green card and, quote, all that implies. Is there a question mark about his patriotism? Well, all, I, you know, I, I can't see into his heart. I don't know him personally. Uh, but what I do know is that green card status is saying, well, I, you know, I intend to make my home in America. Um, there may be times that I'm out of the country, but that will be for a time limited period. Uh, and that to me seems quite strange. If you're the Chancellor, well, if you're a member of Parliament, you know, that to me says your full commitment is to serving your constituents and, you know, trying to make Parliament the best place that it possibly can be. Um, you know, the, I, I don't, I think those two two things are intention. Clearly he does too, because he um, he ceased that arrangement, as you say, in October of last year. But I think, there's, again, I'd like to know the answer to why there were, for so many years he thought that was the right thing to do. And, and again, is this the case for anybody else in the Cabinet? You know, I think it's legitimate that, especially given the burdens people are under, we find out if we are really all in this together or not. I know Labour's been asking questions today about this idea of his assets being in a blind trust. Uh, when he became, I think, Chief Secretary to the Treasury, he put... He put his investments into a blind trust so that there could be no conflict of interest about decisions he was part, to, part of at the Treasury that might then affect those investments. That seems the proper way of going about things. It's hard to think of another way of, of going about things unless you said to highly successful, highly wealthy people, you've got no place in British politics. I mean, in a sense, if, you, if you're going to have somebody at the Treasury who understands financial markets, you, you want them to have been successful. You want them to be sufficiently wealthy to have to require a blind trust. It's going to give them a, an understanding based on success of how finance, mm. commerce and investments mm. work. Yeah, I think Colin Parliament says it's best when it reflects the you know British people and as you say has very talented, very successful people. But you'd want to think that they want, you know, that they that their priority would be on, you know, whether 
prior to Parliament growing their business and and um, and paying taxes accordingly, um, or whether the interest is you know trying to get as much uh, of their interests offshored, perhaps in tax havens, to pay as little as possible, because that's revealing about character. You know, as you say, he put that into a blind trust. That seems wise. I mean, a lot of this, as it will be, a listeners is a long way away from my frame of reference in life. It just simply wasn't isn't likely to be something that I'm concerned about. But it it is reasonable that we know. You know, on on individuals with significant earnings who hold public office, who put up taxes on the British people, that they pay their tax in this country. I, I think that's pretty reasonable to know. And all we're asking, and indeed all he, all he has asked himself, and um, so he clearly thinks it's a legitimate question, is that we establish the facts in this case. And I think that's what needs to happen. Uh, Alex Norris, really good to uh, spend the time today with us. Thanks very much indeed. Mm-hmm. Thanks for your thoughts. Thanks, Colin. Hello. Ella Whelan is alongside me. Uh, just to tap into something we didn't get into today with Alex Norris, I, I was talking at the weekend to somebody about uh, Rishi Sunak in the context. I'm a, big, I'm a big Sunak fan. I love the attention to you know the detail, the grasp of detail he's clearly got. Wonderful administrator, I would argue. Um, I think would make a decent fist of being prime minister. Is there a question, if he becomes prime minister, it looks less likely than it did, about being married to a foreign national, an Indian national, India currently, its state of relations with the UK are not brilliant. Look at Russia. Does, am I barking up the wrong tree even asking the question? You're not barking up the wrong tree asking the question. Um, I think I'd probably not be as nervous about that. But what I think will cut through with people and is a potentially a problem is this idea of, you know, whether it's relation to Sunak's green cards or indeed the fact of um, the kind of dual citizenship, dual nationality, um, is this picture of a kind of global supranational power couple that doesn't really have any roots anywhere. And, uh, you know, Norris made a very good point that if you are a member of parliament, and indeed the prime minister, you are meant, you're all your energies and efforts and loyalties and all the rest of it are meant to be with the nation that you have the most political power over. And um, you're not meant to have kind of one eye on somewhere else wondering if there's a, if the grass is greener in a different country. Or indeed, you know, I, I can't get myself too worked up about the tax dodging question Maybe call me a cynic, but I mean, it, 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 you're talking about sort of um, financial elite. It's sort of par for the course with a, what a lot of them do. The problem is if you have a chancellor who's head of a particular area of government, which has for the last year, last few years, been really vocal in wanting to crack down on benefit um, fraud, on tax dodging for the kind of the, those of us at the, at the kind of pleb level who are really only fiddling a few hundred of quid, then you can't then just uh, be outraged at the fact that your wife or yourself no. is getting pulled up with it when it's not thousands but millions of pounds. Just to be clear, Ella was not confessing to fiddling a few hundred no, pounds there. You no, were just I, no, 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 in no. the abstract. <laughs> <laughs>